Hey guys, this is Titan again and welcome to that second of four parts of my um, global build of entry, global build of city of Preston, that sprawling 1920s city that I made for this um, event. Now, as in the last episode, it was a bit of a, yeah, if I might say so, boring episode maybe as we um, all in all just plopped some buildings and made the waterfront. In this episode I actually um, am doing um, the harbor or starting to do the harbor with the passenger docks of um, that city. Because um, as I already said in the last episode I had that special sort of idea in mind of the big ocean liners at, um, at the front of everything and in the background these um, big 1920s maybe 1930s um, skyscrapers to have that um, unique New York harbor setting like that idealized version of New York as the immigration hotspot of the time and to achieve that what I did first was of course looking at how the harbor of New York looks today and more importantly how the um, passenger docks looked at around the 1920s and my big sort of biggest source of inspiration here were just a few pictures of big ocean liners um, in New York so like pictures of the RMS Olympic or the um, RMS uh, Lusitania or Mauritania so um, so that I, that I could um, see how um, these passenger piers looked back in the days. And what I found out what, was that um, these piers still exist, although in a, yeah, they basically changed completely as they are of course not in use um, as, uh, yeah, they are, aren't of course um, used in the same sense anymore. So um, in New York there are the Chelsea piers um, on the Hudson River and those were used by these big um, ocean liners and so I had a sort of good idea of how this um, should look like though of course um, I'm actually taking a good amount of liberties here to um, for once give it a more unique feeling and not like a copy but also a more interesting feeling um, for example I'm now adding a crane and as I later learned, American harbors didn't have cranes. And it doesn't matter if um, they were passenger or cargo oriented, no, none of them had um, cargo cranes or harbor cranes. But I thought, meh, I still want them. Basically because, yeah, cranes make it look more like an actual used harbor and make it look much more interesting than um, the same harbor without cranes and the second major inspiration for this um, passenger dock here was the um, pier or the passenger pier of the British city of Southampton and yeah that is like um, well I can show you a picture right here that is a painting by the painter Ken Marshall or Ken Mar Marshall, Marshall, um, whatever. He specialized in paintings of the RMS Titanic. And with that, I had sort of a good idea of how passenger piers looked like when there was a ship there. And I basically, yeah, almost copied um, this style of the. Um, of the pier with the cranes with that gangway and um, that is a bit yeah I don't know elevated and with the warehouse next to it and the uh, train tracks at the ground but of course it's sort of a weird mesh up between the piers in New York and the pier in Southampton but I mean it's a game and it's more about creativity than a one by one um, representation of a of how that harbor really looked like of course and so that is what I'm doing here and that is what I um, said last episode that what I'm doing here um, you can do that in every every city that has some sort of harbor it doesn't matter if it's a uh, 
if it's an, an American city you're creating or an, in fact a European city or maybe even an Asian city. Um, I'm sure there are, or, yeah, there are design principles or and ideas I'm using here that you can use um, everywhere. So this passenger dock now is supposed to have um, three, uh, yeah, piers, three harbor fronts maybe, so that hypothetically three um, ocean liners at the same time could um, dock here and could board passengers but of course that's um, not really the scenario I'm going for here as you have most likely already seen in the build-off or in other videos So um, yeah, for the buildings around these piers here, I'm using Fine Builds and Bussing Factory because while it certainly isn't an American factory, it definitely fits the, um, the style I want to achieve here. And in this little yeah sort of courtyard, I'm using my um, or I'm using the modular um, platform hall set of my Dresden Neustadt station as these um, halls fit together can yeah they actually make also make some sort of good um, warehouse um, building and this basically just proves the idea that I had that it actually works as some sort of warehouse building aside from that um, you basically already saw like the most important things um, in the yeah in the, in the construction and in the um, development of that harbor or of that um, passenger docks. Aside from that it's basically um, the same concrete decals and the same whales um, all over the place here because uh, of course um, there is not really a big difference in how these um, docks or these piers um, look like. Aside from that I'm also using that um, that actual actual um, pier building from um, Smiley's from the Steam Workshop um, just um, yeah, to use it as main entrance. Um, to that, um, yeah, to these piers. So, just the architecture reflects that um, theme of the passenger docks better than um, the busing plan does. At least in my opinion. Again, feel free to tell me um, if I actually succeeded in that idea. Next up is the, um, yeah, the, the sort of square or whatever you might call it in front of the passenger docks. And here my main inspiration were um, historic photographs of again the Chelsea Piers in New York. Um, I'm gonna show one of them right now to you. And you see it's basically just, yeah, it's basically just empty land in front of these piers. And Doing that one-to-one -one here in the game, I thought that would have been a bit um, underwhelming. So I took again some artistic freedom and created a more, let's say, a more interesting to look at um, square um, in front of these um, piers. So the first thing I did was separating a street from that main street in front of the station so that we have that main street where the trams go or the streetcars go and where um, cars and buses and trucks and whatever go and then we have that second street right in front of the pier building um, that is probably used for um, loading and unloading cargo that um, is arriving from here.
So yeah, I've, I think you might see some similarities between um, the real Chelsea um, Chelsea Pierce that I just showed you and this. But as I said, I took um, some artistic uh, freedom here to make, yeah, to give it a more interesting to look at feel. But also, I think in the process I made it look way too European again. Um, you'll see that just a bit later. But um, who is to say that there wasn't this single American city that maybe had a mayor that made it look a bit more European or um, whatever. It's like it's at least plausible enough for me. So this is like now the, uh, the ba sort of base structure of that square. And what I mean with, with uh, more European is um, that I'm, well, I'm planting trees here and placing some planters here. I'm not sure if that was a thing in American cities as much as in European cities. Um, but given that this square also is in front of the uh, main station of that city, um, I thought it's like I can't have a basically empty square with some parking spaces and crates laying around in front of the main station. It would have been... Yeah, it would have... I had seen it not really fitting, so I thought let's at least place some trees there that um, sort of at least block the view between the station and some parking spaces and crates. Just so that imagine um, some traveler coming by train to the city, um, it's not the first thing he sees of the city is like boxes and crates laying around. You judge if that is... And realistic thought I had here or not really um, yeah it's basically just um, some artistic freedom I used here again um, or not again I don't think I said that last episode anyway uh, many of these crates are available to the workshop and if you are interested in any props, assets, whatever I used here, you can check out the description that at the collection that is linked in the description. Um, I have linked there everything I used here, but um, not everything that I used in this build is actually available on the Steam Workshop because as I said once a few creators um, noticed that I'm doing this and um, they were so kind as to provide me with um, for example historic ships, cars, um, or whatever so um, not everything is at least now available to the workshop but I'm hoping that this will change um, in the future now if you remember that um, picture I showed you of the Chelsea Piers um, I yeah, I had no idea, or I still have no idea what all these crates and boxes um, in front of these piers are yeah, why they are there, why they are meant to be there. My idea basically was that these boxes are there because like, um, yeah, as they, um, they provide or they house provisions for the ships. So my idea was that um, provisions for the ships um, laying at anchor here, um, yeah, were, were unloaded and later on carried or brought onto the ships and that that was my idea and yeah if you know please tell me if that actually was the right um, the right idea I had in mind there And now the um, 
sort of last thing of this episode and to me as a huge fan um, of the Titanic the most exciting thing of this episode probably um, which is using that ship um, in that city and uh, yeah decorating it and the idea I had in mind here was like sort of having a scenario where the ship is about to um, leave the city and so the passengers are current, uh, currently boarding the ship and uh, yeah there's of course um, lots of people um, standing everywhere um, cheering or, or wishing goodbye or whatever um, if you've seen um, the yeah that movie basically um, you probably know where I may have that um, source of inspiration from <laughs> I'm using these um, concrete paths here or these concrete um, piers here uh, or these concrete bridges here because I think they fit pretty well as um, gangways to the ship and yeah I think it turns out as a pretty uh, yeah, believable scenario and then because time appropriate citizens aren't really a thing um, I used um, these uh, prop citizens made by Jess or released by Jess as part of of his uh, market prop pack and yeah made some uh, waiting queues here so that um, the passengers wait here and they maybe um, have to show their tickets or get a short um, health uh, health um, check they get checked if they're healthy and if they don't have any lies or whatever even though well I don't think there are there were people um, like leaving the US to make a better living in Europe that wouldn't make sense um, in any case that's how it looked well in Europe and now that's let's just imagine there were also people um, going the other way around so yeah that is what I did here and while of course it looks very um, static to have these these um, prop people um, standing here it certainly gives a much more interesting scenario and what I'm doing now is because if the ship is about to leave there are of course already people on board the ship and they would stand um, on the, and at the side of the ship and they would um, say or scream goodbye and they would wave their hands or whatever and I wanted to also have that in um, in my build here and so what I used was just what I did was just plopping these um, prop yeah citizens everywhere on the side of the ship so that um, while it's of course of course not perfect it at least gives that um, that feeling of many people standing there and cheering and yeah it it looks much more interesting than just um, the ship being there um, completely empty of uh, yeah completely empty of people So as I mentioned earlier, um, I wanted to have many people standing there and cheering up and to achieve that, I, as you just saw, I plopped um, many people spawner everywhere on the pier. Um, you'll see that the people are coming now and there's really a lot of people standing there in the end. But I, I actually like that it really gives that feeling that the ship is about to leave and there are many people because it is like an event to see that big ship leaving and also it really adds some additional layer of life to that um, to that whole scenery here and with these last um, things I'm doing here I want to say that's actually already it for this episode. I really thank you for watching. Um, again, feel free to tell me if that is um, an, in an interesting short um, switch of scenery with um, that American project I'm doing here. And if you liked it, um, feel free to comment, feel free to subscribe to the channel to not miss any future 
videos. You can join my Discord server as linked in the description if you want to get in touch with me and maybe tell uh, me what I actually did wrong here. And have a nice chat with me or others who follow my work. And yeah, if you really support me or if you really want to support me, you can do so on Patreon. A big thanks to the people who already support me on Patreon. Oh, and something I'd like to mention. I, um, these, um, yeah, these um, effects I'm putting there just to make um, some steam coming out of the um, three first funnels of the game because uh, of the ship because only the three first were actual funnels and just to make it again look more interesting to look at but i'm already in the cinematic so i'll leave you with those have fun <laughs>